Aloha! Heads up! This is Larry Reed. I bring you this time so that we can have some uh, time together and also my perspective on what is actually going on. And right now, there's a lot going on. <laughs> I want to thank everybody that has supported this uh, program. I want to thank you for being involved and uh, for even for some comments I've received. And uh, the last one that I did was called Dominion. And uh, I talked about uh, how important it is to have dominion. I mentioned some of these things the time before, and I'm, you're going to hear some repeat because the fact of it is there's, I believe, new viewers come on all the time, but it's uh, critical elements that I'm discussing to have effective prayer. So this show is really to, uh, well, I, it's, it's going to be a number of things. I believe it will be some serious prayer. It will be some... Uh, understanding and instruction and what the Lord shows me or what he shows other people I often bring and uh, share uh, so that we can have an understanding you know one of the wisest man on earth ever to be was Solomon King Solomon and uh, God said he could have anything he wanted to ask of me and I'll give it to you and we ended up uh, asking for wisdom and understanding to rule his people and because of that God gave him wealth too but that's a key thing we need understanding in Proverbs, I think it's chapter 4, it says, uh, with all you're getting, get understanding. And so it is important to get understanding because a lot of times, if we don't have understanding, we won't know what's really going on. And we may think something's over when it's not over. <laughs> it's not over until it's over. <laughs> and so uh, I think that's where we're at right now. I think that there's a lot of things going on. And if you listen to the media and a lot of people, some Christians even, some even some pastors, I've heard some, but I think it's really uh, bad when they do it because, you know, I, as I understand it, like 81% or 80-some percent um, evangelicals voted for Trump. And uh, so it's no time to throw in the towel because God is faithful. He answers prayers. And uh, I'm just saying, I believe 100% God's going to have his way in this election. It may not come out exactly the way we thought in the beginning, but I believe it's going to, all things are going to work together for good to them that love God. And so I am going to share with you some of the perspective on that so you can not be taken back and you can understand what's going on. And uh, I believe that I'm sharing not only my perspective, but I've had to dig a little bit and pray and I had to, to seek out and the Lord has put in my path some other people that have spoken prophetically either uh, in person or on YouTube or wherever. And uh, I've gotten different perspective about uh, that. And you know, I heard this uh, prophecy in Washington, D.C., and it was Kent Christmas, and uh, boy, that was a culmination of the events there, and it was incredible. And you come away from there believing, you know, that Trump's going to win the election right off, and so you kind of think, you know, it's just going to happen on <laughs> November 3rd, but it didn't come out that way yet, but it's going to. I believe it's going to, so hang in there. Don't give up. But you think of it is, and then I heard other prophets prophesying, and they seem just a little bit different. And some may, I've, I think I've even heard somebody question that, go, well, how come one's contradicting it? I don't believe it's a contradiction. If they're valid prophets, it's like the Gospels. <laughs> the Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, written by different people. But I like to put it like this. It's like they're looking at the same house, but they're standing on different sides of the house. So you got di four different perspectives, okay? And yet, uh, when it comes to God, he doesn't contradict himself. So those things will blend together. And that's what I'm seeing now. You know, we all wanted to see the thing end at uh, November 3rd. Uh, but uh, the fact of it is, I think um, God has brought us to a, I don't know if we say it's a God or the devil, but uh, uh, we're at a place that we need a Red Sea miracle. And then God gets more glory when that happens. Because when... I'm getting ready to go through a car wash. <laughs> when we begin to uh, understand what God is doing, you know, at first we might just kind of get a little, uh, wow, I thought it was going to happen like this. But you know, the Bible does say all things work together for good. And I think one thing is going to come out of this election and is that the fact that because it did, it wasn't over right away, uh, I believe that, hold on. Hi. So I'm getting ready to go through a car wash. I believe things will come out of this election that wouldn't have come if he would have got the election on November 3rd. I believe that uh, voter fraud would not be dealt with and other things. And I believe people are going to come away more fierce with righteous anger and with more diligence and fervency to pray and to have the victory.
Okay, I got it in neutral and I'm going through the car wash. The Lord says to pray always and everywhere. Lift up holy hands. So uh, <laughs> I can't open the sunroof though. Uh, I'm going through the car wash, but I want to pray with you. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to pray just before we get out of this car wash. Why not? Lord, bless my car. Bless this time together and bless the people that are watching in Jesus' name. So I believe things are going to come out of this that wouldn't have come out of it. You know, we wouldn't have the Red Sea miracle if they hadn't been in a desperate place. They're face up against the Red Sea when Pharaoh was behind them wanting to either kill them or take them back into captivity. So there's going to be things coming out of this election that wouldn't have came out. But uh, it, And it needs to come out. I believe, and I'm praying, that these voter machines will be totally exposed. That it will change the whole election. Wouldn't you like to know uh, what, how many votes really... That, that Trump got, or an estimation at least, a pretty much sound figures of what he got. I believe he's the one probably got 75 or 80 million and, and not Biden. So uh, there's going to be good things coming out of it, I believe. And what's the worst that can happen? Well, God's going to bring a revival anyway. He is. Sometimes it's through the fire. He has to bring that revival. So Lord, we just pray right now. I ask you in Jesus' name to bless the people that are watching. And Lord, that you would give us a good time together and that they would understand more, have more understanding. Lord, that they will also put it into practice in Jesus' name. I feel like I'm in a missile silo in this place. I'm on the freeway now, heading towards Pearl City. And uh, that's just the direction I'm going. I'm not going to Pearl City, I'm going to Chinatown. I believe all things work together for good, but this is not the time to shrink or to faint. This is the time to fight. I want to take an opportunity first to thank people that have <laughs> gave me some comments. And a couple of people have told me that they, uh, when I we threw our shoes, that they also threw their shoes in the living room. And that, that message was about God claiming dominion and he was going to go in and possess the land. But the thing of it is he uses people. So we need to take that position. You know, God through his son came to earth, but he, Jesus isn't here now. He's the head sitting at the right hand of the father, but uh, we are his body and we are the bride of Christ. And I want to just sum it up by telling you this. But well, first of all, I want to say, if you feel I inspired to, <laughs> in the name of the Lord, cast your shoe somewhere and claim dominion over whatever God puts it on your heart over the whole election or over certain states or over the, all the above. Anyway, so uh, uh, do you know that uh, the way the Lord works is he works with man on earth. He gave us dominion in the beginning, but then Satan came and stole it from Adam and Eve. But then Jesus came to earth, paid the penalty. He won it back and then he gave it unto men. And so now we have authority. Those that are in Christ Jesus, not everybody, but those that are in Christ Jesus have his authority. And you know, it's a marriage made in heaven. And you take the first miracle in the Bible that uh, Jesus was at a wedding feast and they were out of wine. And his mother said, they're out of wine. <laughs> and he said, uh, you know, my time hasn't come. But he told, he was gonna tell them to do something. And she said to them, she told the servants, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And that's a good slogan for us. Whatever he tells us to do, do it. It's important. God was about ready to do a transformative miracle. But what happened is he told the servants to pour the water into the jugs. So they got a number of jugs and poured the water in. Then he said, pour it out. So it, when they poured it out, you know the story. It was wine. Hallelujah. So water turned into wine. But it wasn't just a miracle done by God, but he needed the vessels. And he also needed people to do the pouring. And, it do, <laughs> and so he did, he's the one that transformed it. So it's a marriage made in heaven. And that's the way the church is supposed to be. He is the head. He is the bridegroom. We are the bride. And we are his body on earth. And so many things need to be carried out through the Holy Spirit. By his spirit in us. Christ in us. The hope of glory. So hallelujah. So cast that shoe out. <laughs> In Jesus' name, heads up. Jesus said, lift up your heads for your redemption draws nigh.